Hey guys, welcome to Quinian's Budget Crafts. Let's do one more piece for Halloween. So, I'm assuming you saw the thumbnail, you already know what this is. But we're gonna need a bunch of sticks and some gears. First thing to do is to cut the sticks down to the size you need. I'm gonna use this little mini here as a height guide. And that little miniature chop saw makes some pretty quick work of trimming all this stuff down. For the flooring, I used a bit of clipboard and a whole bunch of these little coffee stir sticks. Now the mistake I made here though is the wood glue. I should have actually used Super 77 because any sort of liquid glue is going to cause either or both of these to warp. So next time I won't be using any liquid glues. But anyway, you guys saw me do this before on much larger projects. You just put the glue down and layer the sticks on. Same idea with spray glue except you don't have to you know, worry about stuff warping. Now go ahead and glue your sticks on to make the uprights. I use the cross pieces as a spacing so I know where to put the uprights. A little bit of that super glue wood glue works pretty well. And we'll just stick the angle supports in there. And now we can make the cart. To make the cart I'm using some more of those compressed wax discs. And then cutting out all of the pieces needed to actually assemble the cart. It ends up being an absolute ton of things. I'll try to explain it best I can. You need two long ones for the bottom of the frame, two short ones for the cross pieces between the frame, two popsicle sticks to make the top portion of the frame like the tabletop area, a whole bunch of coffee stir sticks or other popsicle sticks to make the actual table, several long toothpicks to make the axles, and then four angled cut ones that are cut the same angle the same direction. Like you don't turn the stick, you want it to be flat on top so they both angle inwards. Anyway, I drilled a hole through the supports on the bottom, including the cross pieces. That way I could run the toothpick all the way through. Then I glue on the angled cut ones. Put the popsicle sticks on top of that. And then I put a coffee stir stick along the side of that to act as like a framework. I'm not sure what that is, just trying to copy the movie. And then a whole bunch of coffee stir sticks across the top for the actual table portion. Don't really have to worry about them being too long, you can trim that once it's dry. And then I use some tiny little pieces of matchstick to put the extra 45 degree supports that are under there. You really don't realize how much a production team puts into this stuff until you try to recreate it. Then I noticed that the wheels have a little, uh, like a board over the end of the wheel. There's also a little ball in the middle of the board, like a hubcap. I ended up not doing that, but j just the board on the end is fine. I ended up making my table a little too wide, but that's okay. I wanted to go ahead and darken all of the wood before I actually painted it, so this is not a paint, this is a wash. But it is paint, alcohol, mop and glow, or any kind of furniture or floor polish will work, and a whole bunch of water. You want it watery enough that it is water consistency so it will go through this airbrush. And then I just kept adding more and more darker colors as I went. As long as it stayed thin water consistency, that was fine. And once I was all done, I took the rest of my wash there and dumped it into my other wash. Top it off with some more black paint and some more water, and now I have another full jar of wash. Went to try it out, and um, wow, that's dark. Not a problem though, just get a bunch of water on the brush and spread it out. That mini I was using earlier with his hands tied behind his back, I went ahead and chopped him up, repositioned the arms, filled in any gaps with super glue and baking soda, and now we can paint him up. I'm actually not really doing a great paint job, all I did was put some peach on his skin, like where he's shirtless, and then a little bit of like tannish for the hair. I really don't care if he's painted well, it just needs to be there for fun. 
So for the actual paint job on the wood, I went through with a sponge and I used yellow and um, varying shades of brown. Just kept kind of splotching it all over and then smearing it in so it wasn't uh, any like polka dots or anything like that. It'll look really bad at first. Just, uh, just keep putting spots on and smearing them. It'll make sense the more you do it. And then I took a uh, lighter brown and kind of smeared that around some. And then I took like a sort of tan color and just basically dry brushed everything. I'm not trying to make this look too pretty. Actually, I want it to look, you know, uneven and dirty. On the mini, I went ahead and used the silver marker to make some little hand and ankle cuffs. And I used the black marker to put all of the um, restraint lines, you know, where the suction cups are hooked to him. He's got one on his head, and one on his jaw, one on his chest, and one on his stomach. Then I used my little rotary tool to drill some holes in him. That way I can attach the wires that I'm going to use for the hoses. And then just super glue those in. Okay, so back to this framework here. I need a little divot in the center cross beam there to put the, the axle, I guess, for these various gears and wheels and stuff. I'm just using the, the long toothpicks. Seems to work pretty well. This big one in front has a cable that goes down to a smaller one. So I use another one of the those um, cardboard discs for that. And a bit of string is super finicky trying to get this to work. I still never did get it exactly perfect, but it's close enough. I realized I forgot the cross beam that goes across the top of here, so just cut one and stick that in there real fast. There's another wheel on the other side of that, up against that cross beam. That one's a bit smaller. There is one on top behind that. I'm not real sure what's going on there. And then there is one off to the side here that connects to that other smaller one in the middle. So it looks kind of weird, so I went ahead and made my own using a bunch of the little cardboard discs. When I was doing this part, I was pretty sure that the one that I had made is straight in line with the one that's on that belt. Um, it ends up not being that way, but we'll get to that. So I'll make some little stands to put it on, glue it all in place, glue that medium-sized one connecting the other medium-sized one to the small one, and uh, that should be all the gears. Yeah, okay, that wasn't all the gears. So what happened was I had been working off of this screenshot here and it's at a weird angle so I couldn't really see everything and then I decided to go through my other screenshots because it looked a little empty and the, the machine in the movie is like just packed full of stuff. So I looked through my other one and I found this one. Yeah, so um, I'm missing quite a few parts here. So we'll just go ahead and cut a couple of things out of the way. We need a second one of those smaller wheels. Those are actually connected to the bellows. And we need them to sit at a different height. So I used my uh, chop saw, cut off a whole bunch more pieces to build more new things to put the things on. Pretty much the same process I was doing earlier, just a whole lot of it. I drilled some little holes for the axles to go into. And there is also one in the center, so I went ahead and cut that too. Glue all that stuff down. And it looked like there was another really big gear behind that, in between the other two and the uh, water wheel. And then there's that one sticking up in the air for no reason, so I went ahead and added another gear between it and that big gear so it looks like it's connected to something. I think what happened here is 
they actually had two or three of these things and they did multiple different shots on set so what you ended up with is like like the hero prop for the close-ups and then the basic stuff for the other things and so you end up with this you know combination of things that don't actually go together and obviously it's not a real machine so it doesn't actually work but whatever there we go that's fixed but now we are going to need some bellows so for the bellows I am using one of those little wooden circles I got from like one of my kids car kits or something like that we got another one of those cardboard things take some paper towel and trim it into um, Then we can uh, put some glue around three of the edges and just roll it up. I glued a couple of little beads to a toothpick and that way I can super glue that to the top of the bellows and then run that toothpick back to those A-frames you see back there that aren't painted yet. And then we'll just mix up a little bit of tan paint and some 50-50 water glue and go ahead and paint these. Once they're dry, you could paint them with like a gloss mod podge or something to make them shiny if you want them to look like leather. I think this will work just fine. I think I did make mine too tall though. They're a lot more crumpled than I intended for them to be, but that's okay. Just go ahead and glue them in place. Give the top of them a little tilt so they tilt inwards. And that one free hanging wheel that's attached to the ropes, that needs a little stand, so just glue one of those in. And now we need the big water wheel. So just uh, cut a circle out of some foam and then cut a circle out of that circle. I'm using a peanuts can and a roll of tape for my measurements. It didn't really need to be exact, just close. And then we'll do a couple of popsicle sticks in the middle for the, uh, the cross thing, you know, the supports. And drill a hole in those so that you can get more toothpicks to the middle. Then I cut a whole bunch of little pieces of foam with the hot wire to use as like the, the paddle things and just glue them in with some white glue or whatever. I ended up not liking the white glue because it took forever to dry so probably the uh, super glue wood glue would actually work really good there. You could use hot glue but that's going to make a mess. The warp on this thing was driving me insane so I just went ahead and cut the front of it off. Don't really need it anyway. Now we can figure out where some things for the cart go. Now in the movie, when he's rolling him to the machine on the cart, there's no like crank handle thing, you know, like a rack would have. But in the part where they're, they're turning the machine on, there is. So I'm going to have to assume that that's actually attached to the machine and not the cart. I, I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, to make one of those, just go ahead and drill some holes in the end of a dowel. And uh, then you can stick toothpicks in there, and then you've got handles. We also need the infamous Not to 50 handle. That one in the movie looks really crudely carved, which is kind of strange because the rest of the machine is pretty well done. But whatever. Use a little mini rotary tool to go ahead and do that. And I ground a little tab onto it to fit in between the framework and the piece I'm going to put on front of it. For that piece that goes on front, we'll just use a popsicle stick and a couple more little pieces of popsicle stick to act as a spacer. And before we get too much further and start making things excessively difficult for ourselves, let's go ahead and paint everything up. I did water my paint down just a little bit to make it flow easier. And it is a slightly different shade from the rest of the stuff, but that's actually not a bad thing. It gives it a little bit of variation instead of it being all flat. And you can take care of some of the different coloration with uh, washes and stuff. No need to worry too much about it. It'll be fine. So for that popsicle stick that I cut earlier, go ahead and paint the front of that gold, or most of the front of it gold. Paint a couple of little uh, red stripes on the sides, and then pencil in some numbers. 0 through 50. Go ahead and glue that on. And then I did actually end up gluing that handle crank thing to the top of the cart because I couldn't really figure out where else to put it. And it seems to work out alright. I noticed that the back of the handle in the movie is attached to a rope which is attached to some kind of weird triangular thing that's just sort of hanging freely in the middle. I don't know what's going on. So I cut out a little foam triangle and painted that black. 
And then I also noticed that all of the hoses on him are um, like a tan color. So just go ahead and paint those wires tan. Now we can glue in the triangle thing, glue the rope to the back of the handle, and I wrapped the rope around the triangle a few times and just left it free in the back of the machine. You're not going to see that. It gives the uh, intended purpose there. Figured out exactly how much length of these wires I needed and then uh, bundled that with a piece of stiff like hobby wire and cut off the excess. Spin that around the table and uh, super glue it down. And while I'm holding that, waiting for the super glue to dry, I put just a little bit of barn red on his shoulder. Then I went through with some metallic copper, kind of watered down a little bit of this water in the brush. And I went over the gears that I made myself and anywhere the gears have like little, you know, like the white super glue blobs, that kind of thing, just to kind of make them look like metal. Remember that super strong black wash from earlier? Now we can make use of that stuff. Put it on all the uh, things that are too bright, basically. And we compare it to the picture, and yeah, that looks pretty good. The cart is actually not uh, glued into the thing. You can take that off so you have just the mechanism. That way you could use it in whatever game and setting you want. Although, with the little 0 to 50 thing, it'd be pretty obvious what it is, but you know. So there you go. Fun little Princess Bride diorama. I've just sucked 17 minutes of your life away. Tell me, how do you feel? <laughs>